Hi, and welcome to Casual Cactus's YouTube channel, the very first recap! Yay! My sweet and darling cactusy husband has given me the ability to run a mini campaign. I give you the first recap of Delirium's Domain. Our characters meet one another around a long table in a place called the Dreaming, where the King of Dreams stood and began to uh, regale them about a particular problem that he needed assistance with, because wave functions seem to have difficulty handling their own crap. All of these characters have become the versions of themselves they dream themselves to be in their best ideal. The Dream King then explains that all of them have some specific links to madness, they are allowed into her domain, where once he was able to move freely, but he has been shut out. Yeah, that sounds dooming and lovely. With the instructions and backstory that the Dream King has given them, they return to the gate of the Maze of Regrets, where one of the characters, Janice, has stood faithful guard for a long, long time. After a brief moment for uh, Janice to realize that the door he is accustomed to guarding is now far more damaged and a wee bit squeakier and creakier than it used to be, they make their way into the maze which stands between them and the greater Wonderland, Neverland-esque atmosphere that is the world of madness. As they moved forward, they encountered several different interesting life choices that both involve direction and how to handle specific obstacles set in their path. They find some interesting puzzles and some interesting characters. One of these obstacles was a large stone that they had to figure out how to move. One of my characters happens to have animate object and was able to make the giant stone get up and walk away. Should have seen that one coming. After a few interesting turns and interesting spaces, the players found themselves in a clearing that had a single long mirror standing in front of it, a gilded beautiful mirror that definitely did not match the state of decay of the rest of the area. After hanging the mirror on the incorrect wall of the maze, doppelganger-ish reflections of the party came out of the mirror and attacked. This would be a nice time to mention that throughout this maze, my players had to make wisdom saves. Why? Because madness. Some of them did better than others. Claudius struggled a bit more than your average bear with his wisdom saves, leading him to believe that even though the party defeated the mirror party, one of these party members he thinks is an imposter now. Oh, poor Henry. Poor, poor Henry. After successfully subduing the false party, the real party hung the mirror on the correct wall and was able to proceed forward, where they then effectively met a slightly different version of a devourer. The devourer, um, living up to his name, did manage eventually to devour Henry, which I'm sure, had he actually had a chance to notice, Claudius probably would have been excited about, but he was distracted by the fact that devourer. After subduing the beast, it seemed that Claudius needed to subdue Henry. He failed at this thanks to some quick thinking on my uh, my party's uh, part. My party's part. <laughs> but thanks to some some quick thinking by Janus, they were able to rid him of his madness temporarily, at least, and continue forward into the maze, where they saw a small door, and then hearing sounds that were strangely similar to the sounds of the fire swamp in Princess Bride. And I guess that's really where we left off. Thank you for joining me for this quick recap. We'll also be uploading some character diaries, one a week featuring a different character, retelling the story of what just happened from their perspective. Should be interesting and a little bit different from what I'm giving you. Enjoy that. Follow us on Twitch, smash that like button to see more, and we hope that we see you in the campaign. Until then, grab your bats, grab your balls, and just remember, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a glass house. Bye, guys!